go get him again. What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to another episode of Sampling Samples Sundays. This series is where I wear a scent as much as the little sample lets me. It is my scent of the day today, of course. And I'm gonna give you as much detail as I can and give you my final thoughts. I fall by be buying this scent, getting another sample, or simply there is the end of the road for this one. Don't like it. Today's sample is from the brand of Byredo. Man, it seems like forever since I've purchased a Byredo or even sampled a Byredo. Like the brand is just, it was gone. Like I was just like, Battle de Frick's good, buying it. Pulp is good, buying it. That's the end of my collection. Right here, you're looking at it. Reviewed them both. Um, that was a long time ago. Like I'm, I'm saying 10 plus years. And it's weird, like as a fragrance reviewer, you'd think I'd be like testing out fragrances from a brand like this every year. Sorry, I've been falling off a cliff here, but today uh, we are sampling a, some of those nice clear bottles there, the, the really nice ones with the dark juice. This one right here called Tobacco Mandarin. That's the one that was just calling my name. You say tobacco in a name, usually you sell me. I'm like, yes, let's do this. Uh, but you add mandarin, a citrus, like a citrus tobacco based fragrance. Why not? We'll see. Um, but I only own the two freshies, and I say that lightly, Bal de Frick's not really a freshie of the brand. And I did sample, I think back then, at least the bulk of the brand, and those were the two that I got. But this dark juice kind of drew me in. So it's been a while since I've tested out Byredo. I can't wait to get my foot back into the game and check out this brand. I do love the idea of a citrus blended with a tobacco note. So this is part of their Night Veils Extra line. So a very upper echelon, we'll say, and more expensive. They're not expensive enough. They had to have an upper echelon line. Now let's go into the hood. Let's take a look at Tobacco Mandarin. And it was released back in 2020, so it's a newish. Mm -hmm. Concentration is, of course, Extra de Parfum. And the note behind this is Monsieur Jérôme Epinette. Major notes to my nose when testing this one. Um, if it didn't have tobacco, we would have a whole different video here. Where's the tobacco? But yes, uh, that is one of the major notes. Cumin, everybody's little favorite spice, no? <laughs> and incense. So those are the big notes that I got with my nose. Let's get into sniffing. Now let's empty out my little sample here. So let's uh, remind me of this introduction. Might as well do this. Okay, I think it's out of sprays, Mark. Okay, so she's done. Um, and oh, <laughs> she's a little daring, a little spicy. Warm, comforting. Tobacco Mandarin starts off with the tobacco and mandarin note. Surprise, surprise, yes. Um, but the huge curveball in this opening is that cumin. I'm like, where'd you come from? Like, it's engulfing me. I would have to say the tobacco and the cumin are central in this opening. So if you don't like the note of cumin, you may want to be careful with this one. I know that some people don't get much of it in this release, but I do. Um, it's jumping off my skin. And I like cumin in my fragrances. Like, it has to be tastefully done. And here it is. Like, there's a tobacco note and there's some mild citrus. Um, so it is well done. Yeah. So on my skin, the cumin really shows itself in this scent. But good news, if you're not a fan of it, it will tone down with time. The mandarin. So the, the big, one of the big notes that's supposed to be in this fragrance, you know, it's in the name of it. Um, smells like a citrus peel. I mean, it really is um, three dimensional. And a lot of citruses in a lot of fragrances don't do that. You know, there's there's only a little handful uh, of fragrances. And this is not heavy on the mandarin at all. But it is a unique addition to a darker fragrance. And as little as I'm getting of it, it's beautiful. Like, I wish there was a way to amplify that mandarin note more in this introduction. I wish it was more of a primary note with the tobacco, right? Like it's saying in the name. Um, it's not, it's more like a third wheel to the cumin and of course um, the tobacco. 
but it's so well done. It's beautiful. The spices of cumin, coriander also comes into play. They take over for a good period, a good chunk of this introduction, but mellows almost to a whisper in the deep heart. Um, so some people will have to be patient um, with this release. For me, I love that. And it transitions so well into the heart. What a beautiful warming scent. Now, the labdanum resins start blend, blending into the scent and gives it an ambery glow. And it is going to amplify more into the mid. The incense starts showing more of its personality here once the spices start mellowing. And you are going to get some sort of a ashy, smoky quality here. When I first tested out Tobacco Mandarin, the first thing that came into play, and this was the first time of testing, it transported me to a Sergitan Sheldrake release. Um, it, it just really reminded me of that um, because it has complexity to it. The blend is well done, and it is what I come to expect from a Sheldrake release, and this smells like that, like eerily. If you didn't put a sticker of Byredo on here and you, you slapped a Sergitan sticker, I'd be like, yeah. This is one of the better ones actually. And this is a huge compliment to the brand of Byredo and the nose, Monsieur Pinet. Um, a great use of resins, um, balsamic qualities here. Um, you got leather, you got smoke, you got tobacco and you got ambery tones. Um, and then you use like a little bit of a citrus, but a lot of spices. And it's that's just like a Sheldrake si signature. And it just popped like immediately. I was like, whoa, is this the right sample? <laughs> is this the right brand? Because Byredo, mm, I, I gotta say, this kind of blending, mm, not there, but here, beautiful, beautiful introduction. Now, once we get into the dry down, the scent continues on that dark, heavy train of tobacco, labdanum, um, there's oud here, incense, and you start losing the cumin note, but gain woods. Now, the oud gives the scent a dusty quality and it works well with the other woods in the scent, mostly the sandalwood. The ambery touch, surprising. There's no vanilla listed, but there's some sweetness in this release and just a pinch of it, but it's there. And there is a little bit of a powdery aspect in this dry down too. So it's just like tonka bean, maybe, um, but very interesting um, that there's some sweetness and a little bit of a powdery aspect, which is aided of course by the labdanum of course, and the incense that gives the scent a truly beautiful uh, backbone and at times takes over the scent that almost makes you think that this is an ambery scent, not a tobacco one. Weird, eh? Also at times, the labdanum even makes this scent feel like a leathery one instead of a tobacco-based one. It felt like a smoky leather release more than a tobacco one. At the end of the day, any scent that gets compared to a Serge because of resin, spices, citrus blend up top, is top notch in my books. Um, if you can pull that off, um, you know, you're not unique, but this is unique. Um, there's nothing in the Seljitan lineup that is like this, uh, but the imagery and the blend and everything that's put together, it really reminds me of a Sheldrake release. Um, this is a highly surprising release from the house of Byredo. This is a huge win for the brand. Um, highly recommended by me. Uh, to at least sample this. It is a pricey little devil, so definitely sample. It may not be up your alley, but for me, there's just enough of great notes, dark notes that I absolutely love, and a little bit of that spice that I like, that little edge there. So now let's get into Seasons Day, Night Versatility and Performance. Seasons, this is a fall and winter fragrance, cool weather, day or night, I feel like it's more of a nighttime scent. Uh, versatility below average. I feel like this is a kind of scent that you have to tuck away, you know, during the really warm months. Um, and of course, you know, dressing it up or something like that. You kind of have to restrict this one a little bit. Performance, and that's where, that's a biggie because these type of scents, you want to have some performance. Longevity was eight to 10 plus hours. So very good longevity with average projection. So not a beast but very close to that cusp. I'm very well constructed, really. As you all know, I'm not a huge Byredo fanboy like many are on YouTube. Only own two, love them both, but I did want to give the brand another shot. Several years ago, I tried the whole brand and came out buying only Pulp and then of course, Belle de Frick. And I've been pretty much ignoring the brand since then. This new line in 2020, gave me a good reason to sniff the brand again. 
And this one in particular, because of the name, the notes, the dark juice pushed me to sample. Tobacco Mandarin gave me a shot in the arm and showed me what a dark Byredo can do. It actually interests me to delve more into the brand of Byredo. Let's see what they have been releasing. Um, so you may see a little more sampling samples of the brand because off the strength of this little sample, I'm slightly disappointed on the Mandarin, not playing a large role here, but it's expected with so many dark and dense notes that surround it. I kind of figured it wasn't going to be a big deal in this release, but you know, the ones that I do like have really good citrus notes in them. So I was kind of hoping I was not expecting the heavy spice here. I really wasn't, but after the initial shock, it was met with a positive light from me and reminds me of an Uncle Selch. It really did. The backbone is beautiful. Tobacco, ambery, woody concoction that has a little whisper of spices in the background. Absolutely love this scent. Dislike the price a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Knowing me, price is not going to stop me from getting this one though. So there you have it. My thoughts on Tobacco Mandarin from the brand of Byredo. It made enough of a uh, a good impression that I'm going to be delving more into the brand and just seeing. I know Byredo is a gimmicky brand and a lot of people don't like this brand on YouTube. And then there's some that absolutely love it and have several bottles. And I'm kind of in the middle here that I'm just kind of like, it's a mad brand. I bought one or two, kind of forgot about them, but now I'm back on. Let's see what else they can do here and we'll check out some more from the brand. So now, like every sampling samples, I got to give it a score. And ooh, this is tough. This is a good release. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I've been doing a lot of 10 out of 10s. <laughs> you feel maybe I'm losing my touch a little bit. I'm giving out like cookies. Too bad, 10 out of 10 this one. It's a, it's a game over, it's bottle worthy. I'm gonna get a bottle of this stuff. I absolutely love it. Um, I can't wait to get my bottle. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. As always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Mm choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.